Good morning students. Today we will have the biology practical session. So first we will study about the experiment. Make a temporary potato osmoscope to study osmosis. So you should know what is osmosis. So osmosis is diffusion of these water uh, molecules from higher concentration of water to lower concentration of water through a semi-permeable membrane. So that is osmosis. That is movement of water molecules. Okay. Be very particular here. Movement of water molecules from higher concentration of water to lower concentration of water through a semi-permeable membrane. So see the requirements here. We need a potato. So you have to peel it off and make a depression like this. So that there is no mold anyway. Okay. So make the base flat. Hmm? Yes. Then you need a petri dish. Then you need sugar solution and water. Plain water. And you need these needles. This. What do you call them? Ballpoint pins. Okay. So these many. So the entire setup is this way. So you can see the setup here. So ultimate setup will be like this. So in this uh, depression in the potato you will have to take sugar solution uh, to some level and mark it with one pin. And then uh, take a petri dish for plain water and place the uh, potato with sugar solution into the petri dish. Okay? And leave it for 2-3 hours. Then what you will observe? You will observe that there is a rise in water level in the uh, sugar solution inside and that is marked by another pin. Okay. So this shows that water from outside has entered inside. So this show, explains the process of osmosis. So now how do you set it up? So take a petri dish like this, pour some water in it. Hmm. Then you will have made a depression in the peeled potato and you have to pour sugar solution in it. Half level and mark it with the pin. Mark it with pin and place it in water. So leave it aside for 2 to 3 hours. Then you will see what is the difference there. So this way you have to conduct the experiment and show it to the examiner during exams. So what is the observation here? There is rise in sugar level inside the potato depression. So conclusion, what is the conclusion here? The rise in sugar solution level is because of the uh, movement of water particles from outside to inside. This shows that osmosis has taken place. Now what is the semi-permeable membrane here? See all this potato is made up of cells. So each will have a plasma membrane around it. So plasma membrane is a semi-permeable membrane. So from one cell to another, water will move and reach the space inside and will reach the sugar solution. So because of this water level inside or the sugar level inside will increase. This has explained the process of osmosis and it is, this is called as the potato osmoscope or potato osmometer. Got it? Yes, so you have to conduct it. Now coming to the next experiment that is study of plants found in zero critic and aquatic adaptations or aquatic conditions and comment on their adaptations. Means how these aquatic plants adapt to aquatic mode of life and zero mode of life. So what are zero fights? Zero fights are the plants which grow in scarcity area where scarcity of water is there. In desert areas where there is no water, there is no rainfall. So plants will grow. So how do they grow? They grow because they have certain modifications in them. So that they will retain water in them and they will survive. Okay? Yes, in uh, aquatic plants where more water is there, how do they survive? There are modifications which enable them to survive in water. Got it? So yes, so here we have certain samples which you are familiar with and which you observe them daily. So in zero conditions, zero critic plants, you will have to study about Calotropis, Procera, Acacia, Arabica and Apexia Delaney. So this is called as first one, Calotropis Procera. What do you call this in Marathi? It is Rui. We offer these leaves, huh? we make 
garland of this leaves and offer to Maruti, uh, that is Hanumanji. So you are all familiar with. So how these, see, uh, they will grow straight. Nobody will water them. Okay. So how do they manage to grow? So here, more than managing to grow, they have modifications to retain whatever water is present in them. So water is, ground water is available for them, roots will suck the water, but whatever water has been taken up by the plant, that is retained. So for retention of water, what are the modifications? See now, see the leaves, how they are. So when compared to other leaves, like hibiscus leaf and all, they are very thin, but here they are very thick. Hmm? They are very thick and the surface is covered by... Uh, leathery uh, structure ok so they have got minute small hairs on them so that they will uh, they will show me a reduced transpiration ok and uh, see the and they have latex in them see when you cut it freshly you will see that a milky watery substance milky substance will come out that is called as the latex so see when water is plain water is there it evaporates very fast but if it is uh, having, it is if it is very thick, it won't uh, evaporate that fast. If something is mixed in water, it will not evaporate faster. It will be retained in the plant. So here, latex will help them to retain water in the plants. So for the for a long time, the plant will be fresh, huh? and it will survive survive in zero conditions. Okay. Yes. This is about the. Kelotropis uh, procera. Yes. Now next one is next is Acacia arabica. So what is the other name for Acacia arabica? Huh? Common name Babul. What is the name of Babul? So here this is Acacia arabica. So the botanical name is Acacia arabica. So now this is also a plant growing in zero condition. That is in scarcity of water. See everywhere you can see this palmy plant grow, tree growing. Hmm? So here what are the modifications done to adapt to zero condition. So here also the aim is to reduce the transpiration. That is evaporation of water. So how it is done? And also here modifications are there to prevent these plants eaten up by the uh, grazing animals. Okay. So see here, the stipules are converted into thorn-like substances, thorn-like structures. So this thorn-like structures will prevent the plant eaten up by the herbivores because if thorns are there, animals will not eat because they prick them. And then the leaves are reduced to leaflets. See, wide leaves are cut into uh, small, small bits. So it gives the structure of the small leaflets. Okay. So see the structure. They are very very minute. So it has the surface of the leaf has been reduced here. So if surface has been reduced, transpiration also will be reduced. So more water is retained in the leaves here in the plant. So these plants will survive for many years. You all might have seen. Without watering also these plants will be growing and they survive. Okay. And they use the ground water. So see the stem here, it is very, it is having a hard bark on it. So it again avoids uh, uh, water evaporation by vibration also. Okay? Yes. So these are some of the, so here in these experiments, you, know, you should know the adaptations. Means how they adapt to the uh, conditions of environment there. Okay? So this too. Then one more, the third one is the Apachia Deliri. So on this like this. And on this small ponds are there. Yes. So here how is water retained? So first adaptation is the leaves are reduced to spines. Very small needle dry like structures. So these are the leaves which are reduced to small thorn like structures. So here complete transpiration is arrested here. So there is no water loss by transpiration. Now how to uh, get an area or place for photosynthesis? Here the stem is converted into a green flat like structure. Green flat like structure which is called as the phyllon. Which is called as the phyllocrate. What is yellow plate? It is the flattened stem which is green in color and which helps in photosynthesis. Okay? Yes. So these are the and uh, when you cut open 
aloe vera or any such type of cactus, what do you find inside? There is a sticky substance present. Hmm? Mucilaginous substance is present. So why mucilaginous? Because when the water is in the form of sticky substance, it won't evaporate faster. So water is retained in the cactus plant because the contents are mucilaginous in it. So these are some of the modifications in zero plants to adapt themselves to the zero fitic or desert like conditions. The plants growing in the aquatic habitats. Aquatic means what? In water. So aquatic plants again are of three types. Those which are completely submerged like hydrilla means their roots are embedded in the base of the or the bottom of the water body. Okay. So such plants are called as the submerged plants. And there are certain plants which are uh, partially submerged in the water and partially in the uh, atmosphere. Hmm? So they are one type. Then the third type are the floating type. Hmm? So this way there are three types of aquatic plants. So uh, though they are uh, immersed or completely present in water, but still they survive. So it so happens that if something is immersed in water, it starts, uh, what to say, rust, I mean, um, degenerating, no? whenever some, uh, something is present in water. But here, though they are present in water, they don't get degenerated. What are the adaptations there? So, your first examples are hydrilla and hyconia will be studied two times. So, you can see here, this is the uh, specimen, live specimen of hydrilla. Hmm? I just show you the diagram here. Yes. See here, it is a very simple uh, plant. See how is the stem? They are completely immersed in water and the roots are submerged in the soil in the base of the water body and they have got foreign leaves. See, at certain places, the leaves are more red, means at one place only many leaves are present. And the stem is very, very feeble, that is very thin, so that it can move towards the flow of water. And how do they uh, avoid uh, this one, damage or uh, dropping of the plant? Their entire body is covered by a substance which does not drench the plant. Aquatic plant. So all the leaves and the stem will be alive, though they are present in the water. Hmm? Yes. That is, they have uh, their body is covered by a waxy substance. See, waxy substance is there, then the plant will not get to drench in the water. Okay. Then, so that they, these are some of the adaptations in vitrilla. Now coming to the Iconia, which is a floating type of plant. Uh, here, by going to Pune, there are rivers, you know. Those are completely covered by such green mass. Have you all seen? It is called as Delcumbi also. Or it is also called Dr. Haisan. Huh? So, it is, so once it starts growing in any body, in any water body, it will cover the entire water body. So, it will spoil the entire habitat of that particular water body. Okay. So, how it, uh, see here, the roots are dispersed in water, they are floating and here, these are the leaves. So, what makes them float? So, here at the base of these leaves, you know, there is a swollen structure where erythema tissue is present. So, which helps in buoyancy of the plant. So, it helps in floating. It won't get uh, sunk to the bottom of the water but it floats on the surface and uh, by the branches which grow on the surface again a new plant will start growing. So there is vegetative propagation taking place here. Okay. So these are some of the modifications in the xeric and aquatic plants.